Hello and welcome. My name is Ashley Hillman. Today I'm going to be talking to you about UDL guidelines and policy. Principles of Universal Design for Learning. Principle one, multiple modes of representation. How will I support access and understanding of the subject matter that's being taught? Principle two, provide multiple modes of action and expression. How will I support action and expression of ideas? Principle three, provide multiple modes of action and engagement. How will I support engagement in my classroom? Look at number one, representation. When learning new material, use many different ways to deliver content. We could watch a video, have students research the topic on their own, provide options for perception. How can I make my materials adjustable and customizable? And how will I make sure information is presented in more than one way with videos and captions, podcasts, and transcripts, spoken instructions, or graphics? Engagement is principle number two. Provide options for sustaining effort and persistence. How will I build understanding of the purpose of the activity? How will I offer and support challenge and offer extensions? How will I support collaboration and foster community? And up, what options will I use to provide feedback? Principle number three, action and expression. Provide options for expression and communication. What media options will be offered to support communication? What tools will be offered to support the sharing of thoughts and ideas? And what options will I provide to support increasing fluency independence? Benefits of using rubrics. Rubrics help clarify vague, fuzzy goals. They help students understand your expectations. They help students self-improve, inspire better student performance, make scoring easier and faster, make scoring more accurate, unbiased, and consistent, improve feedback, and reduces arguments with your students. Self-regulation is important. Provide options for self-regulation. How will I support motivation and self-confidence in being a learner? What strategies will I offer to support personal coping skills? And how will I support self-assessment and reflection? Policy and guidelines in creating an online course. The overall design of a course must be overlo not overlooked. The instructions are clear and re to read and help the learner find the course modules and all the items needed for the class. The purpose and structure must be stated clearly. Policies must be in place. Expectations should be clearly outlined for discussions, email, and communication in the course. Technology requirements should be outlined and clearly stated. Any prerequisite knowledge should be made known. Technical skills need to be outlined. The instructor should provide a self-introduction. Contact information for the instructor should the school and should be posted for the school and any issues that may arise. There should be an introduction area for all students in the class to introduce themselves to other students if it's possible to do so. Learning objectives. Learners should get precise learning objectives for today's class. Learners become active and partners of the learning activity. Learners know values of their presence in the class. Learners participate actively and show positive attitudes towards learning. Learners try to complete the tasks on time, and they can evaluate and assess today's learning outcomes with other peers in the class. Assessment strategies. The assessments appropriately measure the learning objective. The method of assessment should be outlined, so such a pass-fail, certification, digital badge, or otherwise. The criteria for the evaluation of a learner's work should be directly related to the course objectives and participation. The assessments are in order, 
follow the universal design for learning and should be appropriate for how many modules are in the course. If there's five modules, then there should be at least five assessments. Instructional materials. The instructional materials correlate with the stated learning objectives in each module. The purpose of the instructional material and how the materials are utilized must be in agreement with each other. The instructional materials must be relevant and materials presented must be clearly defined. Course activities support the learner with engagement and interactions. The activities must be in agreement with the learning competencies. Classes that are taken not for credit may use technology in various ways to actively engage the student. Instructors should use self-check options to check for understanding such as a reflection assignment. Course creators should provide immediate feedback and students will need to have a syllabus. All technology must support the learner. Tools utilized must keep the learner actively engaged in the lesson. Technology should be easy to find. All course tools should have privacy policies included for reference. Support services should be outlined and provided at the student's request. Any student who needs assistance should be able to find what they need. Videos should have subtitles and be easy to understand. There should be a link to help students with disabilities get the assistance they require. Course accessibility. The course design provides tools for students with disabilities and helps make the class easy to navigate. The course material can be provided in a way that supports the universal design for learning. The course should use multimedia. The course should be free of any grammatical or spelling errors. Thank you for your time. Thank you for taking the time to review UDL policy and guidelines.